Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, greetings to you all. This is Toecraft and finally we are back. And I am extra excited because this is the first episode of subscriber replays. This replay was sent in by Tankshell101 and he sent in a game about the stock IS-3. So when he sent in this replay, he asked me to uh, give some feedback on this gameplay. And of course, mate, I will gladly do that for you. But first, we have to take a look at this game. So the game just started off and as we can see um, XVM gives this a 22 win percentage according to all the stats of the players as we can see. This is a whole red team against some really 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 strong opponents. So I was yeah, extra excited to see this replay just because of this estimated chance win of win according to XVM. I am really, really curious how this is going to go. Anyway, as you can see, the chat is saying this everywhere. They're pretty sad about this win chance, but of course, guys, remember, this is only an estimation. This doesn't mean that the game is going to be a loss automatically. So, what has he got here? He has got the IS-3 with the stock 122mm gun. Let's see how he is going to make it work. So, he's on the map. Uh, Arctic region in a very 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 good matchup as you can see he's a top tier heavy tank first of all we can see the WZ111 getting spotted on our left there he's a really good player he's a green player so we have to take a look and keep attention to oh there's the first enemy tank spotted a KV3 and a VK36H he puts a good shot into the KV3 which this 122mm gun is absolutely capable of doing. But oh my god, did you see the turret of that KV-3? <laughs> that looks a bit like a pyramid, oh my god. No idea why I'm making fun of this. Anyway, some really good shots into the KV-3. And I have to cover this, so let me pause the game for that real quick. You saw him angle the IS-3, and the problem with angling the IS-3 is that it has a pike nose. And when you angle a pike nose tank, you can see that this yeah, plate on the front of the tank gets really flat. So that's why the KV-3 was able to penetrate this. So keep that in mind. It is possible to angle the IS-3, but keep in mind that when you angle the tank... That front plate gets really flat. Anyway, he handles the situation just great here. He pulls back, puts a shot in and pulls back again. Just the way the IS-3 likes its uh, engagements. And he takes down the pyramid IS-3 of the, the, the KV-3. And now this VK is also at the end of its life. And oh my god. <laughs> he blows his head clean off. And now we can see a Black Prince. Who is in a really good position to be honest. He's held down. And yeah this is of course never going to penetrate with the stock 122mm gun on the IS-3. So this is a really bad engagement. Because of course you know the two, the Black Prince has got 240mm of armor on its turret. So this is never going to penetrate. Even with premium rounds. And now he's going to load HE. Uh, to shoot at the turret of the IS-3 and this is something that I would have done differently But I'll tell you about that after we have taken a look at the replay So as I said he's loading HE and he's going to shoot the Black Prince in the turret And one thing that I have to keep note of is when you uh, shoot somebody in spaced armor as he just did He shot HE into the gun mantlet of the uh, Black Prince That will of course do even less damage because you shoot into spaced armor If you shoot HE make sure you Try to aim at a flat armor surface and not on spaced armor because the splash damage will just get absorbed by the spaced armor. But oh my god, the WZ111 comes in and he is firing heat, the scumbag. What a scumbag. Anyway, he's got to fight against two players and Tankshot does the right thing. He flanks the WZ, he puts a great shot into him and now the WZ bounces his heat round, the scrub. Some justice for Tank Shell here. And then he's waiting to take out the WZ, but luckily the 
T54 Mod 1 does it. Anyway, the Black Prince now is driven down and the 122mm gun on the IS-3 here is easily capable of penetrating the front of the Black Prince as the Black Prince only has 152mm of frontal armor and this gun gets 175mm of penetration. So everyone is just bombing in as you can see right here. But let's take a look at the map guys. This flank is absolutely annihilated by Tank Shell and his team as we can see. Still the estimated chance is 20% which doesn't say anything. But take a look at the other flank. This doesn't look very well and this doesn't look very good either. So what has he got to do here? The right thing, yeah, this is just a chance. Is it handy to go for the enemy base and cap it out? Or is it handy to come back and help defend the allies by defending uh, the allied base? So he chooses to go back and help his allies, which in my opinion is the right choice. Because as you can see, there is a lot of allies with a lot of good health tanks staying behind here to attack the enemy base. So I think this is the right move that Tank Shell made here. So he has to be careful though, because uh, the enemy won't be expecting him to come back. And he is uh, going to have to drive in the open in order to get into some good positions to try and engage the enemy. Luckily there's this huge rock here on his right. And this huge ridge that will enable him to get past this open field here undetected. And now there's this AMX M4 back there. And yeah, this is a not a very good engagement for this gun. As this gun is really inaccurate as you can see. But yeah, this is... This was a very unlucky shot. This is how I uh, use this 122mm myself. Stalin doesn't uh, work well today. Okay, see, even if he doesn't aim the shot fully, the, sh the shell still went exactly where he aimed it. But as the AMX M4's upper plate was really well angled, the shell didn't manage to penetrate. Anyway, the M4 gets taken out by the T28 prototype. Well done there. And as you can see now, the entire left flank here has fallen. And there's a crap load of enemies uh, coming in, as we can see. So now it's just, yeah, thinking uh, what is the best thing to do. Because as you can see, the allies have broken through here and they are um, yeah, attacking the enemy base. But as they are doing that, these two very good players here are def trying to defend their own base by shooting uh, Tank Shell's allies from that position right there. And he did a really good thing here. He went closer towards the enemy. And now he's got this concealment in the form of bushes between him and the uh, Sherman M4A1 Revalorisé and the IMX CDC. Two really good French medium tanks. As you can see, they are not focused up on tank shell at the moment. They are, of course, focused up on trying to defend their base. So tank shell is going to make use of that. But take a look at his ammo capacity. Yeah, not his capacity, but take a look at his ammo, guys. He's only got four AP shells left. And he takes down the IMX CDC with one. So he's only got three AP shells left. So if he high rolls two shells, he should be able to kill this IMX M4, uh, M4A1 Revalorisé with those uh, three shots. Unfortunately... He just low rolls the first shell. Doesn't really matter though. He goes in really aggressively, which is the right thing to do. And the Revelorise looks like his turret is jammed or something because it doesn't turn. And that's only an advantage for Tank Shell as he can take out the M4, not having taken a single point of damage. But now he is left to his HE shells. And he is going to have to take on an Achilles. Oh, Achilles just gets taken out, which is nice. He only has to fight against an AMX 1375, which is, of course, very capable of handling. This AMX 1375 has almost no chance to penetrate the IS-3. But as you can see, the AMX 1375 is a good player. And he is loaded in a premium clip of APCR shells to try and take him down. But Tank Shell is doing the right thing. And he's going at him really aggressively and... The 1375 just lets him take the kill. Really, really, really well played, man. And I am extremely thankful to you, Tank Shell 101. He contacted me in game, 
and he said that he had a really good game for me to show off on his channel and I was really excited because he is the first one that sent in a replay. So well, I do have to uh, give you some tips as you wanted them. But first I have to say really well, really, really well played. Because even though your statistics might not be that high, and of course statistics don't say that much in the game. But still, for the statistics you have, I think you played this game really, really well. Although I do have a few tips. Let's take a look at the tips that I can give you, uh, Mr. Tank Shell. So for the first tip, Mr. Tank Shell, I like to look back at the situation where you engage that Black Prince. When you saw that you couldn't engage the Black Prince front on, you decided to load HE, and that is something that I would have never done. I'm not saying that it is bad to fire HE at well-armored targets, but I just feel that I am much less effective firing high explosive shells at well armor tanks. I would prefer to get myself into a situation where I am much better off fighting against the enemy tank and that means driving forwards and putting a shot into its hull armor because as you know you can easily penetrate the front of the black print with the gun you had mounted on the IS-3. But as the WZ-111 drove down afterwards you did the right move. You kept back to first engage the WZ-111 rather than the black prince because the WZ-111 is a much more dangerous target. Tank Shell for the second tip, I've brought myself into my own garage and my second tip is about your IS-3's ammo loadout. So I'm going to get my stock IS-3 here and first I have to find it. Where is it? Here it is. So the stock IS-3 of mine as you can see right here, as stock as a dodo or how do you want to call it. So, as you can see, I haven't got any ammo selected in my tank, so I'm going to select the ammo uh, yeah, layout that I would prefer you to use. I saw that you had exactly the standard loadout, and although this is a stock gun, as you can see, the way towards the, um, yeah, towards the top gun on the IS-3 is 44,000 experience, which is a long way, so I would advise you to also get some premium rounds on your vehicle and drop out a lot of the high explosive shells as we don't have that many shells in this tank let me find out a little bit 10 would be a little bit too much as you can see that you almost don't have enough but 5 is a bit too less in my opinion so I'm going to go with 7 I think a 7, my, uh, 7 times 390 alpha damage is a very big and good amount of damage so that is great and it only cost me 50k credit so that is absolutely fine maybe we can drop out a few more of these high explosive shells i prefer to use three because you don't um, need that many shells in this tank the only reason why you would want to have a lot of high explosive shells in your tank is to reset a cap that is why i would always advise to use at least one or two he shells in your tank just to reset a cap somewhere if needed if you're fighting against an uh, e75 for instance this gun has no guarantee of going through an uh, e75 and what angle so shooting an he shell at the uh, e75 when it's capping your base will be a very good deal so this was my second tip I hope you have learned something from these tips, but I don't want to take anything away from your game. Your game was just absolutely amazing. So we're now going to take a look at the post-game stats of your game, Mr. Tankshell. This was just a great game for you, Mr. Tankshell. You got an ace tank and badge in your RS3 with the stock gun, which is an absolutely crazy achievement. You got 1,476 experience as well as 42,579 credits. You got a crap load of tokens as we can see. The Bruiser, the Hand of God, the Demolition Expert as he ammo wrecked the VK in this game. He also got a Duelist, a Fire for Effect, a Fighter and a Shellproof token. He has bounced a lot this game and we will take a look at that in a second. He also got a Steel Wall medal and the High Caliber medal which is a really good result of course for you. As we can see who is on top on damage and XP of course Mr. Tankshell with 1465 base experience which is a really really good result for you mister and getting 4000 damage plus with the stock on an ice 3 is never a bad result 
as we can see he blocked 2885 damage really really well played you angle the ice too well but do keep in mind that you have a pike nose as i said in the video although you fired a lot of those shells yeah all of your ap shells and those shells are in cheap you still made a very good profit although you're not running a premium account so i am very very happy that you sent in this game to me thanks you and you fully deserve this episode dedicated to you on my channel so guys this was the first episode of subscriber replays i'd like to thank you so much for watching and if this video has sparked your interest in getting a replay on my channel as well I will show you in the screen right now what you need to do to get your replay sent in to me. Again, special thanks to Tankshell101 for sending in his amazing replay in the Ice 3. And if you want to send in a replay, it doesn't have to be anything extraordinary because this is just a series where I show off gameplay of my subscribers. Furthermore, please leave a like as I did put a lot of time in making this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.